Okay, so apologies for taking so long to come out with another vlog, but I've just not really been in the mood to vlog lately. I've been busy with my nano novel, and I just really haven't been in the mood to talk about romantic comedy, so hence the long absence of Angie B from your vlog screens. Okay, so today's topic is romantic comedies Angie B can actually get behind because I did a nice rant vlog about how much I hate modern romantic comedies, particularly ones starring Kate Hudson or Matthew McConaughey or any, you know, variations thereof. So I'm not exactly a rom-com sort of person, unless it has zombies in it, which would make it Shaun of the Dead. And so I don't really feel like I'm all that, you know, knowledgeable about romantic movies, so I really even shouldn't be passing judgment about, like, what are good and bad romantic comedies, but I can have opinions about things I know nothing about, like all the rest of the world slash America, so. Okay, so, romantic comedies I can get behind. I like Sandra Bullock, okay? She may not be, like, an Oscar-worthy, talented actress, but... What she does, she does well. She does comedy, and she does romantic comedy as well. I love her facial expressions. I love how willing she is to put herself in ridiculous situations, and to fall on her face, and to wear horrible clothes, and all of the above. Um, I just think she's, she's spunky, and she's funny, and she's really good at doing humor. Two Weeks Notice is one of my favorite Sandra Bullock movies, in large part because I also kind of like Hugh Grant. I know he's probably a twat in real life, but he's pretty damn charming, and I just love them together. I like America's Sweethearts a lot, even though I'm not a big Julia Roberts fan. I really don't like Julia Roberts, so most of her movies fall into the not-great-romantic-comedy category for me. But I really like America's Sweethearts, because Catherine Zeta-Jones has never been more ridiculous than in this movie. Billy Crystal is great and snarky, and he has some great one-liners. And it's John Cusack, okay? I love John Cusack. I love, love, love John Cusack. Also, Hank Azaria does a great job in this and is really funny. I think this is an underrated comedy. I mean, I know it's not great. I know it's not, you know, super highbrow or anything. But I saw this in the theater, and I have both a VHS and a DVD copy of it, and I've watched it a bajillion times. And I really like this movie. I think it's funny. It's funny without being saccharine, and it's funny without being, like, overly disgusting, which a lot of romantic comedies tend to do, which I don't understand. My Big Fat Greek Wedding. I love this movie. I love, love, love this movie. I think it's because Nia Vardalos is just so sincere and sweet and quirky and so realistic. I feel a lot like her, actually. I may not have the crazy family that she has, but, you know, her laments about her love life, I totally sympathize. And I think it's just a cute movie. I always like movies that actually showcase another culture and do it, you know, with not only humor, but in a really respectful way. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of ridiculous stuff that goes on in this movie that a lot of people would say kind of mocks Greek culture, but I think it's done very respectfully, and I think it's, you know, it's very true in just how it shows how crazy your family can be, and how they can drive you completely insane, and yet they're your family, and they're always there for you, and you will always love them, and you'll always want their, you know, acceptance or their support. You know, so I, I do really like this movie, because I think it's funny, and it also has a really interesting cultural aspect, and I have to say, it's the best thing Joey Fatone has ever been in. I actually really like him in this movie, which is crazy, but the whole cast is great. I love how crazy everybody is. It's a really funny movie. I think it also helps that it was kind of like a low-budge indie film that just suddenly blew up and became big, and it didn't start out as a big budget, you know, trying to be the standard romantic comedy, so I think that really helped it. Bridget Jones's Diary, because not only does it have Mr. Darcy, a.k.a. Colin Firth, in it, but Renee Zellweger actually did a really good job. Renee Zellweger is a tough actress. I either really, really love her, like in Cold Mountain, I thought she was fantastic, or I really, really hate her, like in Chicago. I don't know if it was just the face that she put on and just how ridiculously skinny she was in that movie, but she's one of those actresses where I either love her or hate her, and I loved her in this movie. 
I love the books, okay, so that really helps. But this is really funny. It's got some really great laugh out loud moments. Bridget is a real, you know, believable, down on her luck, 30 something, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places. And I just, I love that it's a real retelling of Pride and Prejudice without being too ridiculous. And I mean, it didn't really make everything completely cliche. And I love the fight between Colin Firth and Hugh Grant near the end of the movie because that is so how, you know, early middle-aged men in suits would fight, you know, with ridiculous flailing limbs and bad coordination. And it's a really funny movie. I really like this one. I'm also a huge fan of the classic romantic comedies, the classic screwball romantic comedies. If it's got Katherine Hepburn, Cary Grant, Jimmy Stewart in it, I love those kind of romantic comedies. Those are so great. Uh, Philadelphia Story is probably one of my favorites of the classic rom-coms. I like all of the Marilyn Monroe movies, too, although those would probably be more in line of just screwball rather than romantic screwball, but Philadelphia Story... It's really great because it's got a great cast. Everyone does a fantastic job in terms of acting. The lines and the dialogue is just, oh my gosh, so funny, so quippy, so fast-paced. It's great. And I love how it kind of throws you a bit towards the end, you know, with her and Jimmy being drunk and romantic with each other. And then you're like, oh my gosh, is she going to end up with Jimmy? And then there's this great big twist and... Yeah, it's kind of predictable in, you know, when you look back at it retrospectively, but I think I like that it did kind of mix it up and that, you know, it it spiced things up and I just love the characterization of Tracy Lords. I love how Katherine Hepburn plays her. It's great. My biggest problem with romantic comedies is that a lot of them are just focused on really cringe inducing humor and disgusting bodily humor and putting women in positions that turn them into ridiculous man-grasping caricatures. That's why I don't like modern romantic comedies, because too often the women are the ones that are completely bumbling and not at all, you know, able to stand on their own two feet. And yeah, granted, Bridget is pretty bumbling, and, you know, a lot of the romantic comedies I like tend to have bumbling, you know, female characters, but some movies just take it to the extreme, and they make the women into caricatures that aren't three-dimensional and that are shrill or hysterical, and I don't like that. Um, also, the men just come across as a little too perfect. I like it when my when the men in romantic comedies, you know, when they're a little bit more down-to-earth or when they have flaws or whatever. Um, for instance, Mr. Darcy is pretty much a pompous prick through a lot of the movie. Um, John Cusack is totally hung up on his ex-wife and popping a lot of herbal medications and gets drunk and crazy at times. And Hugh Grant is like the worst boss ever on the planet. I really like a lot of the Sandra Bullock movies because not only is she goofy and funny, but she's also an extremely intelligent, competent woman. Like in two weeks notice, she's a fantastic lawyer and she's really take charge and she knows, you know, how to do her job well. She's smart and she's sassy and she sticks up for herself, so I like that about her. I like uh Nia Vardalos's character in this because uh she's sweet and down to earth and just real innocent and nice. She's not a grasping harpy, she's not, you know, over the top ridiculous and a buffoon. She's just an average nice girl. Julia Roberts' Kiki is, you know, really res responsible and capable and can handle everything, and I really like that about her. And I just, I think that a romantic comedy really needs to have three things. It needs to have a solid plot and story to it. So there's got to be a good setup. There has to be really good chemistry between the two leads. There are so many romantic comedies out there where they just pair two of the hottest, young, you know, prettiest actors, and they have absolutely no chemistry together. And that sucks, because in romantic comedy, they have to have chemistry. Also, the writing has to be sharp. There has to be really good humor to it. I don't want trite, cliche, overdone lines that have been in 50 other movies. I don't want ridiculous setups that you know, cheapen or character characterize any of the characters. So, I'm pretty discerning and demanding when it comes to my romantic comedies. 
Those are just a few of my favorites. I mean, I can really get behind classic romantic comedies because I feel like those were the best. Those were the ones that it was more about the writing and the snappy comebacks and the chemistry than about anything else. And I just feel like the level of acting was much better back then, too, in Hollywood and in the big-budget films. I think nowadays we're really lacking in some areas in terms of acting ability. So that's my vlog, that's my rant, that's my ramble for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed and stuck through the whole tiring thing. I'll catch you guys later.